Welcome to The One Reviewer. My name is Will, where I do tech unboxing, tech reviews, and tech tutorials. And in today's episode, I'm going to be reviewing the Razer Tataris version 2 Meccana membrane gaming keypad. Um, so this is the version 2 of it. I'm super excited to be reviewing this because I can use this for two purposes. One is for uh, gaming, obviously, and the second one is for productivity. Uh, before I forget, I did receive this as a sample unit to review on the channel. However, all opinions expressed in this video are solely my own. In today's video, I'm going to do an unboxing. I'm going to review the unit itself. I'm going to go through the different comfort levels, the switches. Um, I'm also going to do an in-depth tutorial on how to set this up using the Razer Synapse software from assigning different key bindings, assigning different keys, functions, as well as changing the lights, as well as the most important piece of it is how to create macros and assign them to different um, keys. I've been using this for two weeks now, and I'm going to talk about my experience using this for both productivity, which is DaVinci Resolve video editing, as well as for Fortnite. And my kids were really hoping that it was going to improve my Fortnite game. Again, if you saw my last video, I am apparently the weakest link in when we play squads. Alright, so if you find this video helpful, please remember to give it a thumbs up, like the video, and consider subscribing to my channel for similar content. Okay, so let's take a closer look at the box of the Razer Tartarus version 2. And this one is the Mecha Membrane Gaming Keypad. And it also has Powered by Razer Chroma, which means I can sync the lights with my Razer Ultimate Viper um, gaming mouse. Uh, so let's take a look at the back. So at the back, it just says that is the all new Razer Mecha Membrane, 32 fully programmable keys. And then we just talked about the Razer Chroma. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a quick unboxing and see what's in the contents. And uh, we will set it up. Let's open it up. And here it is. So this, so right off the bat, um, I have to say that this is very light and it's very plasticky. To be honest, it feels very cheapish actually. Um, yeah, it's just very light and feels a bit cheap. It has that nice foam wrist pad here that you put your wrist on. Uh, in terms of the, you know, the direction keys, it's exactly where I would expect the, you know, WASD for the directional arrows. Um, the buttons, and then this feels clickish. Um, there's that scroll mouse feature, and then this is your space bar. Um, and there's clicks as you're kind of going through it. Uh, and then you can program all of these keys. So I know there's a way to kind of, this doesn't move. Ideally, I can actually move this up a little bit more to curl around so you can get access to these keys. Um, but it, it, there is no flexibility allowing me to do that. Um, so these keys, I think I'm gonna have to actually like reach over to, to use these buttons. Um, uh, these ones are okay. Um, and then the scroll feels feels okay. There's a clicking noise for sure in all these buttons. Um, so main purpose of getting this is for twofold. One is using for Fortnite and one's using for DaVinci Resolve. So I want to create some macros for DaVinci Resolve instead of using the mouse to do um, common tasks. I want to program that into the, to the gamepad. So let's uh, so let's get this hooked up and we will see how we get this configured. In the sign of software, select the TARDIS keypad. Based on the Razer support site, you can create unlimited profiles for the keypad. You can create profiles based on specific applications such as DaVinci Resolve or Excel, or games such as Fortnite, Civ 6, or Rainbow Six. In the last two weeks, I created two profiles. One was for DaVinci Resolve, and the other one was for Fortnite. One of the nice features is, is the ability to import profiles or export profiles. For example, if I find a TARDIS profile online that I really like, I can download it and upload it to the profile and start using it right away. I'm going to be doing a video on my DaVinci Resolve mappings in a future video. So I can upload my profile on my YouTube channel and if others want to, they can actually download it and use it for themselves. I'm going to switch to my Fortnite profile and you can see the different keys I have customized and are highlighted. Within the DaVinci Resolve profile, if I hover my mouse over the keys, it will display the custom mappings, whether it's a custom macro or a defined key. I'm going to demonstrate assigning key 14 to a function key. In DaVinci Resolve, F9 is to insert a new clip into a timeline. 
Under the keyboard function, I'm going to choose function and use the drop down to select F9. Once I hit save, key 14 is now highlighted. I'm going to demo on how to create a macro. On the left hand side, I'm going to select macro, click configure macros. Click the add button and I suggest you label the macro right away. Name macros based on the application. Unfortunately, you cannot group macros by application. To avoid confusion, I place DR in front so I know those macros are only for DaVinci Resolve. And for Fortnite, I, I should probably relabel them to FN so I know. I'm going to click record. I'm going to hit the record button. There's a three second timer to get you prepared. I'm going to type the keys I need, which is Control R, and that shows you whether you press it and the release in terms of milliseconds. And you can manually adjust those if you choose to. Now I'm going to sign it to key 9 on the keypad. I'm going to click on Macro. And from the side Macro, I'm going to choose DR Retime Control. I'm going to say Play while Sign Key is pressed. And then I'm going to hit Save. So now the key is highlighted and you can see that it's ready to go. Next, I'm going to review the lighting options. You have to create a lighting profile for your different applications. Unfortunately, the lighting profile cannot be linked to your keypad profiles, so you have to select them both separately. I hope they fix this in the future. When you first start up, no lights are set up. Rename the profile, in this case DaVinci Resolve. For DaVinci Resolve, I decided to group the light colors by functions. So the green buttons uh, are for my edit page. So there's all the functions that work on my edit page. Uh, I'm going to group two red buttons, which is my zoom in and zoom out of my timeline. I'm going to choose a blue one, which is what I call my retime controls. I can adjust the clip speed. And the two yellow functions are my save and undo buttons. Once you have everything all set up, you can hit save. Here's a quick look at the Tatar's keypad. Uh, as you can see, the lights aren't very good, I find. Um, the lighting bleeds to the other keys. So um, if you look on the right-hand side of what my profile is for the lighting, and you compare it to the lighting on the keypad, uh, you can see the light bleeds. And, the, and even though buttons two, three, four, five aren't light up, it still kind of lights up on it. And so I find that the lighting isn't that great in terms of this unit. Here's a quick demo of me using the keypad while playing Fortnite. Overall, the buttons are very responsive, even though it's not a true mechanical uh, cherry red switch that I'm used to on my Ducky One SF. And also the actuation, you do have to press down a little bit further to, to actually actuate or activate the key. So uh, that's one thing I wish I could adjust the sensitivity on. I don't want to press down as hard as I, I need to to actuate it. Uh, but overall, it's very comfortable. I, again, the wrist guard is very nice. Um, and the feel of it after playing one or two hours on it, um, my wrist is feeling good on it. Alright, so that concludes my video of the Razer Tatars version 2 mechanic membrane gaming keypad. Overall, I am very happy with this unit in terms of productivity. It has definitely sped up my workflow for DaVinci Resolve, being able to assign different macros to the keys and quickly able to edit uh, my videos has been wonderful. In terms of gaming, as you can see from my video, it has really not improved my Fortnite playing skills, much to the disappointment of my kids. Uh, however, I have to say it is much more comfortable gaming on this keypad versus a mechanical keyboard, especially um, having that wrist uh, guard there and to kind of the comfort level of my wrist is a lot better. I am going to switch from a mechanical keyboard to this. And having all the buttons assigned around my four fingers uh, was very helpful as well. And with some muscle memory, I'm sure I could get a little bit more better at playing Fortnite. Uh, I've been using this for two weeks and overall I'm very impressed with it. Um, stay tuned. I am going to do a long-term review after a month. I'm going to dedicate a video for DaVinci Resolve using the gaming keypad 
and then I'll probably do a second video of my settings for Fortnite uh, for those that are interested. All right, so thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please leave it down below. Until next time.